worship on this beautiful Tuesday as we celebrate the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, there's a couple of announcements. There is a brief, uh, there will be a brief congregational meeting after worship on Sunday, August the 2nd, and the sole purpose of that meeting is to approve the spending of part of the uh, gift from Fred and Dolores Strasberg to be used for a uh, specific project. The August newsletter is in production and will be available on Sunday. And then if you uh, if you don't get one before, then it will be available also next uh, next Tuesday. Are there any other announcements? So uh, please continue to remember those who are listed in the uh, in the bulletin for prayer. Um, uh, Ask you to add to that, I don't know if he's in the moment, Bishop Radoski. Um, Bishop Radoski, our former bishop, was uh, injured a couple of weeks ago on a hiking trip. He fell backwards, fell 18 feet, and landed on his back. And he is home uh, in a neck brace and uh, apparently doing as well as can be expected. But we prayed for him on Sunday, and we want to continue to pray for Bishop John. And then Judy Kale. Um, Wes and Judy are not here today because she's having a heart catheterization on Friday uh, in Watertown, so they were not allowed to, uh, to be out. They have to be quarantined. Um, as you <coughs> see, and if you got the email, uh, every other, the end of every, I don't know, the pews are <laughs> roped, are roped off. Uh, for when we have when we have communion, if you came in on this side, when you all you have to do is just take one of the ends of the of the rope off and then just leave it and go back around so we're all coming all coming this way okay okay got it okay all right um okay then i believe that's those are all the announcements um so as the bell is rung let us pause and give our attention to the leading of the holy spirit as we worship In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desire to know, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin to God the Father, that we may receive his forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In his mercy, Almighty God has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sin, 
as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Shall not rest 
on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous might not stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O oh Lord, to those who are good, and, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But to those who turn aside to their own crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evil doers. Peace be upon Israel. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 8. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn with a large family. And those whom He predestined, He also called. And those whom He called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of the Father, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Or hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able for the gospel. The Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, when, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they threw it ashore, sat down, and put the good into the baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. If you were to poll or question a dozen Christian people, I'm positive that at least one, if maybe not two, 
would, uh, if you ask them to share with you their favorite verse, Romans 8, 28, would almost always be among them. It is, I think, in the, in the years that I've taught confirmation class, depending on the size of the class, at least every other year, one person, one student chooses this verse as his or her confirmation verse. For we know that all things work together for good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Last, this past week, um, as, I, as, I, as we uh, worshiped together on Tuesday and then throughout the week, I got to thinking about this, the verses from the lectionary again. And so during the week, I sat out on the front porch and I reread Romans 8 a couple of times. And it struck me, I guess, in a way that I never really understood before. But it struck me how verses 1 to 27 help us understand the meaning of verse 28. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Or call according to his purpose. What exactly is that verse's meaning and what exactly is the promise and assurance that it's given is given to us? Now the way that it's often approached is, I mean in, in today's lection, today's lesson, begins with verse 28. You have to go back to last week to hear the previous verses. And maybe sometimes from week to week we might forget the previous verses. So I, I want I want to offer to you the context of verse 28. You recall that um, in verse 1 of chapter 8, Paul began by saying, for there, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And it goes into a long, uh, long uh, tre treatment and presentation of the work of, of the Holy Spirit. And then he begins in verse 18, I consider that the present suffering or the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. That is something we should cling on to um, with all our hearts, soul, and mind in our current situation. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing to the glory with the glory about to be revealed for us. The creation, the whole creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning like a woman in, in labor pain, a woman giving birth until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit through, through Jesus Christ, his, his death, resurrection, and ascension, and through baptism. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he is seen? Who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. Likewise, or in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with us, for us, intercedes for us, with sighs and groans too deep for words. And then God, who searches the heart, knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Now it's certainly appropriate for us in the context of funerals or in the context of, of tragedies to cling to that promise. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. And so we could say that yes, Whatever, whatever tragedy we have experienced, whatever illness we're struggling through, whatever it is we're going through, maybe even COVID-19 or imagine uh, we have people in this congregation who have been unemployed uh, and still waiting to get unemployment for months because of the huge backlog. Think about, think about the struggle of a family who's lost income. How do, we, how do we cling to that promise? We know that all things work together for good. But what I, want, what I want to offer to you is that what Paul means in this verse is contained in the verse prior to it that I just read for you. 
In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for when we do not know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit Himself intercedes for us. The sighs and groans too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Now, I know I presented this to you on a number of occasions, but stop and think what St. Paul is saying. God has poured out His love for us in, in our, into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is at work in us, enabling us to be able to pray. And when we don't know how to pray, the Spirit prays for us. He intercedes for us with God. And God understands it because He knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for us according to God's will. And if you think about it, it's like breathtaking and it's slightly confusing. And that's how, that is how I understand verse 28. For we know that all things, all these things that I've just been telling you, work together. God is working all these things together for good for those who love God who are called according to His purpose. So let's, let's take a step backwards the beginning and put this in context. If, if, if the eternal God created the heavens and the earth, and if He created man and woman in His own image and likeness, and if He called Abraham to be His chosen, Abraham and his descendant, to be His chosen people, to be the light for the world, and if He completed all of His promises in the, the incarnation, the death, resurrection, and ascension of His Son, Jesus, and if He has poured out the life of the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus into our, into our lives through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, then the God, the eternal God of creation, the God of election, the God who chooses a people, is in fact the God who dwells in us. He is our God, not that we own Him and He is at our beck and call, but that He is power working powerfully in us so that we are enabled to know how to pray, we are enabled to know how to serve. Because as you go on in this passage, it said, um, what are we to say about, about these things? If God is for us, who is against us, etc.? Who's going to condemn us? God is for us. Well, what about Jesus? Well, Jesus is the one who died for us and who sat, sits at the right hand of God and He Himself intercedes. For us. So not only is the Holy Spirit interceding for us, but the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus is also interceding for us through the work of the Holy Spirit who has been poured out. And the Holy Spirit brings our prayers before Jesus who is at the right hand of God. It's almost overwhelming to try to comprehend. Now, having proclaimed all that and having, I hope, together affirmed, yes, this is true, I, be I believe, I believe that, then we also need to tie that in with the, at the last two verses. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. How do we know that? Because God Himself has poured out His own life in Christ into us. God dwells in us and the Holy Spirit is constantly at work in us. And I'm telling you, as your pastor, this is a message that I needed, have needed to hear, and I need to hear over and over and over again, especially given, given the chaos and madness that we're all going through these days and all trying to uh, to survive from together, that there is a reminder to me that however long this, this stuff lasts, there is one thing that is absolutely certain, that all things God is at work in us. All things work together for good for those who love God, and nothing will be able to separate us. Nothing, 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 nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I give you that promise in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand and with assurance let us affirm the Christian faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we pray. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us, let us pray for one another, for the church, for the world, and those in need. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you call us to make every need known to you and to cast our every care upon you. And when we do not know how to pray, you give us your Holy Spirit to intercede for us. Give us such trust in you that we come to you without hesitation, but in humility and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Trusting in God's faithful love, let us pray for one another. As God has called us in Christ and by the Holy Spirit to be in ministry in and to Lebanon and our various communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church around the world, for the North American Lutheran Church, our Bishop Dan and our Dean Craig, and for Bishop Radoski. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation, for our leaders, and for the many nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the families of our congregation, especially those struggling under financial burdens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are lost and have not responded to God's saving word in His Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are ill, for those who are homebound, and for those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask all these things of you, Heavenly Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty and everlasting God. Before you formed us, you knew us. In Abraham and Moses, you called us to be your people. You predestined us through the power of your Holy Spirit to be confirmed to the image, conformed to the image of your crucified and risen Son. In him, you justified us by your grace, and on the last day, you will glorify us to live with you forever. And so we gladly thank you, and with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we lift our voices to sing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve the true faith of everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in this holy gift that we are living members of this body and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as the candles are extinguished. to God. 